Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of God Saw's Turnbuckle, the wrestling video podcast here on YouTube. And again, I am still in that process of working on an audio variation. I don't know exactly when I'm going to re uh, start releasing those, um, mainly because I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to do, how I want it to work, and how it wants to go. So it's, t it's in the planning process right now and we'll see where everything goes from there because I would like to try to broaden the audience as much as I possibly can, but in order to do that, I probably got to be on some other platforms in order to do so. So we will, uh, we'll work on that down the line and we'll see where everything goes on that one. But this, this episode of God Solves Turnbuckle is going to focus around, uh, we'll go off and say it, the newly minted GFW Impact Wrestling, and this is the one that aired on, se not September, it's still July, it's July 6, 2017, um, and this is their first show after Slammiversary, now unfortunately I didn't get to see Slammiversary uh, before you didn't see this, so I haven't really done anything in the terms of a Slammiversary review or anything in that sense to see how those matches went off, so... We'll just go with how everything starts out with the show. Um, the show starts off with LAX. They're in their um, uh, clubhouse type area. You get a couple of these throughout the entire show. I'll, uh, I'll talk about both of those right now. They start off the show basically saying that they're going to become even bigger than ever. Everything in that sense. They're going to announce a new member to LAX tonight. There was going to be a new member coming out there, and it just kind of leaves us like, oh, who could it be? Who is it going to be? What are they going to do? Everything in that sense. And you got another promo a little bit later on, basically saying, uh, with them saying how they're going to up the level of violence on the show. They're going to do this. They're going to do that and show how dangerous they really are to go along with it. Um, I've been liking LAX's promos as of late. <clears throat> they just come off as people that typically do not um, <clears throat> like anyone for the most part. They'll pretty much go after whomever they feel like at any given time in order to get what they want. And it's just, it comes off really good. Uh, so they start off the show in the in-ring area. They start off the show with Alberto El Patron coming out. He is celebrating his pay-per-view victory. Yes, he had won both the GFW and Impact World titles at... The pay-per-view over Lashley, he's celebrating the ring, cutting a promo about how he's going to be a fighting champion. Anybody who wants a shot, come get that shot. This does bring out Lashley. And I love the fact that he comes out there and just trashes the entire celebration that Alberto El Patron is doing. Lashley's come off, and, he, and like both guys are coming off as face and as heel. Uh, in this sense, this changes a little bit towards the, uh, towards the end of the night. Slight spoiler uh, on that one. But, uh, like, he comes out there is like, saying, like, hey, when I was world champion, I didn't do things like this. I didn't have champagne. I didn't have a big celebration. I didn't do things like this. Oh, I'm trying to think if, it, if he actually did, which he might have. I forget, I forget every, uh, every aspect of it. And he starts trashing his, um, his father and his brother who are out there. Uh, really going after uh, his dad in the sense of talking uh, and making very like poignant comments toward, towards him to kind of fire up everybody and basically him saying he wants a match later that night with Alberto El Patron. He wants his rematch for the World Heavyweight title, which of course Alberto El Patron in a very angrily way afterwards does end out accepting because of what was being said inside the ring uh to go along with it uh and it was a pretty good segment i actually i thought that was a good opening segment to the show itself and it just and again it sets up a world title match for later on in the evening uh you did have a backstage thing which basically um hopefully ends the whole commentators thing with josh matthews and jeremy borash and they throw the pope in there as well where they basically, or you have Bruce Pritchard saying that, it's like, okay, is this all done? Can we just go back to you guys being announcers and everything in that sense? No more of this uh, bickering, no more of this, no more of that. It's like he goes off and says, and by the way, if it, if it does end out happening again, that you guys start bickering or you throw a punch or anything in that sense with each other, it's just like it, uh, when they had the segment in India. It's like, all three of you will be fired. And it's for some odd reason, even though Pope's the middleman, and I like how he points out, I was like, dude, I'm just the middleman here. I had nothing to do with this. It's like, well, now you're part of it, apparently. Uh, so Pope is being thrown unjustly in there. Which does end up meaning that we pretty much get normal commentary tonight. 
Thank you. Thank you on that. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they pretty much end that as much as they possibly could after the Slammiversary match and everything to go along with that. Um, so this leads to the first match of the night, which was Sanjay Dutt going up against Caleb Conley. Um, this was a decent match. Like this match itself, I don't think in the uh, long term really means much of anything, though what they do in the end kind of does mean something down the road. And it shows a potential, uh, does show a few for Sanjay Dutt going down the road. Sanjay Dutt wins, which I thought was a decent, decent enough match uh, for everything they put in there. They allowed Caleb Colony to show off a little bit inside the ring, um, but Sanjay Dutt does get the victory in the end. After the match, Trevor Lee attacks Sanjay Dutt and basically says, it's like, and just like that, your new X Division champion, Trevor Lee. And he ends up just taking the title, leaving and taking the title. And that's going to be probably uh, Sanjay Dutt's next program. Uh, I would have to assume it's going to be Sanjay Dutt's next program, making sure he gets back his title that he never really lost uh, to go along with it. Uh, so, yeah. A uh, decent enough segment to go along with. And like I said, it sets up a storyline down the line for Sanjay Dutt with Trevor Lee over this stolen over the stolen X Division title. Uh, so up next, you had a promo backstage with Grado. Oh, God, he's back. Uh, Grado, the Veterans of War, and Eddie Edwards. And, uh, it was just a very weirdly contrived team. At least to me, it, it just felt like it. Like, Eddie really seemed... Like, both Eddie and Grado seemed out of place in this one, uh, in, in every way. I, like, I've never been the biggest fan of Grado, uh, in that sense of everything. Though I do get the whole aspect of having, uh, having comedy every now and again. I just feel like his comedy isn't really there, uh, in, in that sense. And like I said, Eddie Edwards seemed very out of place in this match, especially after him doing a Full Metal Mayhem match uh, at Slammiversary, which, again, I still haven't seen. I'm assuming it was probably good. But they were basically cutting a promo, and Grado's, like, trying uh, saying how much he loves being in America and everything to go along with that. Everybody kind of cuts a little bit of a promo leading into an eight-man tag with Chris Adonis, Eli Drake, and Faloba and uh, Mario uh, Baraka, Going up against the Veterans of War, Eddie Edwards, and Grado. This was a, it was an all right match. It was an okay match. It just it, it felt very out of place. At least to me, it felt very out of place. Though it's setting up this storyline with uh, Joseph Park and uh, Grado, where after the match, at, you know everybody cel celebrating Veterans of War and uh, it's like a, yeah, was it Wilcox and. Um, Oh, I forget the other game. Wilcox and Murphy, I believe. I forget what the I forget what the other one is. But yeah, the veterans Warren Edwards, Edwards leave. Grado's still in the ring. Joseph Park comes out and basically tells Grado something which he ends up not liking or something like that. And both of them end up leaving. Uh, so it's setting up some kind of storyline with that. We'll see where that goes and everything that uh, go along with it. This leads into uh, another match with Matt Seidel going up against Braxton Sutter. This was a fun match. I thought this was a really good match between both of them. Both guys got to kind of show what they can do inside the ring a bit. Matt Seidel going over in the end with a uh, with the Shooting Star Press. I thought both of them looked really good inside this match. Uh, they are starting this thing where Braxton Sutter is going to be extremely frustrated now. Like when... Uh, Ali's trying to attend to him. He pulls his arm away and everything to go along with it. So is this leading to a heel turn already? Or is this just him showing a little bit of frustration and they're going to go somewhere else with this down the line? I, I don't know exactly where they're going to go with this. Um, in, in this in that sense of everything. So uh, what, what is uh, what's next? Okay, next after this though was the Super X Cup being announced. You have Jeremy Borash in the ring basically saying that you know we're gonna have this eight-man tournament single elimination and they were gonna announce everybody so they had uh, people from other promotions uh, as well as impact people as well inside of the actual tournament uh, the people that they have in there uh, I think we've seen most of these guys on the show before though some of them still kind of uh, just focus around other independent scenes they're not full-on with impact wrestling uh, so you had 
uh, ACH, I didn't really know him off the top of my head. Andrew Everett, which obviously I've seen an impact uh, before, but I didn't really recognize him right off the bat because he, it's been a while since we've really seen him around all that much. Uh, uh, Tajiri Ish oh my, this is the guy from Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, Ishimori? Yes, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, again, I, I don't think I'd seen him around. Uh, inside of there, but I think they have him going up against Davey Richards in the first round as well. Uh, yeah, it's Dav him and Davey Richards in the first round. And uh, it, it was interesting that they have Davey Richards in there. I like how Davey Richards was coming out, selling the... Uh, uh, though I didn't see the Full Metal Mayhem match, it looked like he was selling the Full Metal Mayhem match in there. So he came out at least uh, selling that. To go along with it. You have Desmond Xavier, which he's been an impact for a little while uh, as well. And then you have it it Idris Abraham. Uh never really heard of him before. Uh then you had Sammy Gar um Garvina, I don't know how to pronounce those names. I'm horrible with names, by the way, people. I'm not gonna lie to you. But this one this name I do know because I have actually at least watched the first two seasons of Lucha Underground now. And they announced it from the AAA promotion uh, to go along with it. And it's Drago. Drago is around with Impact Wrestling. And I find that I, I find that really cool. I like Drago inside the ring. It'll be interesting to see how they portray him. To be honest with you, the way I, the way I would see it, and it's just I guess however the bracket actually falls falls in. They didn't actually show a bracket for the uh, for the matches themselves. Uh, I would personally like to see in the final, or at least at some point in time, would be uh, Drago going up against Davy Richards. I think that would be a good match. Or Drago against Andrew Everett, or something in that sense. I think those would be two good matches that they could do down the line. But we'll see where they go with everything. And then they said that they were going to have their first match next, which would be um, Idris Abraham. I'm per I'm sure I'm pronouncing that name wrong. Uh, going up against Desmond Xavier. Uh, Desmond Xavier goes over in this match, and this was a really fun match to watch. Um, in the terms of like. Uh, it, it was your kind of X Division style match. Uh, you, you know, guys getting off some good stuff. They were so, they were kind of telling their story in, uh, a little bit in there. Matter of fact, they both showed um, video packages of both guys before the actual match itself. Both of them kind of putting over uh, the, uh, the Super X Cup, everything in that sense. Telling everybody a little bit about themselves. Uh, and then they go out there and they have this really good match uh, on TV. I thought it came off really good. Uh, nothing that you would uh, nothing out of the ordinary that you would typically see from an X Division match itself. But I thought it came off really good. And the, this is just the a little bit of what they're what we're supposed to expect from this. I think we're gonna have a very good uh, we're gonna have a very good tournament to watch uh, in in this sense of everything. And we'll see where they go along with this and what kind of stories they're going to build going into these other matches to go along with it. Right now, the story is these guys want to win the X Division Cup, the, the X, uh, Super X Cup. Uh, but are they going to try to give other little subtle storylines to kind of, like, outside of, like, Davey Richards, who we know is a heel, but it's like, how are we going to make these guys heel, face, where are we going to go with it? Uh, in that sense. So, uh, right before, actually we have a few things right before the main event of the night. Uh, you had Gail Kim basically saying that she has an announcement for next week. And they're kind of just leading it off to like, what, what is it going to be? No one knows. Uh, then you had another backstage promo with Moose, who was talking about his, um, his next grand championship defense, which would be the next week. The name is slipping my mind, and I'm sure I'll figure it out before next week. Uh, before next week, and everything to go along with it. But as of this taping, I forget what it was. Who it was? Uh, EC3 interrupts, and it's like you know, I just beat James Storm uh, with and left him lying, everything in that sense. And I've been you know helping, uh, ru not running the company, but you know, like holding the company up for so long. It's like, where's my grand championship shot? Moose tells him to get in the back of the line and wait his turn, which kind of makes you assume that in the terms of that title it is going to be the next 
major feud that they're going to have with that title, which is probably going to be EC3 and Moose. And, and Moose down the line, which I think would be a good match, and we'll see that one down the line. Um, so the match right before the main event was Rebel going up against Sienna in a non-title match. This is actually a decent match. Um, not too bad. Uh, probably the first time we've seen Rebel on Impact Wrestling since that, um, was it that one night only pay-per-view that they had where she had that horrible match with Shelly Martinez? Oh man, uh, it does look like Rebel has gotten a lot better in the ring, uh, inside this match. Sienna does go over in the, in the end, but, uh, nothing really too memorable out of this. It was just kind of a match that was there. Uh, and it was de it was decent enough. I thought it was a pretty good match. Uh, to go it was a decent enough match for everything. Like I said, it's showing Rebel having improvement in the ring, everything to go along with it, and yeah, it wasn't too bad. So, so this leads us to the main event of the night, which was Bobby Lashley going up against Alberto El Patron. And you know, as much uh, uh, before we get into the match, because I thought this was good. I thought this match was good uh, in every sense of it. Um, as much as Alberto El Patron likes trashing the WWE on social media or this or that or you know whatever, he sure he really does like wearing that Alberto Del Rio gear, doesn't he? <laughs> because he was wearing it again here tonight. Matter of fact, he's been wearing it quite quite a bit. I don't know if it's like him trying to make a statement that he wants the rights to Alberto Del Rio or something like that. I don't know. But uh, let's get away from that. That's for like a different video or something in that, in that sense. Uh, so this match I thought was uh, really good. Well, really well told. Good hard hitting match between both guys. Both of them kind of leaving it all out there in the ring. Uh, I like the aspect of um, Lashley teasing going up to the top rope and doing Alberto Del Rio's type finisher uh, to go along with, with everything. You had certain good aspects in there. And both of them were putting on... A really good match and then out of nowhere LAX shows up uh, LAX shows up they start beating down Bobby Lashley and and this is like right towards the end of the match oh well, would have been it seemed like it would have been the end of the match anyway because Alberto El Patron was pretty much down and out uh, Lashley was kind of putting on the finishing touches to him when LAX comes down, they beat down Lashley. So Lashley wins the match by DQ, and they beat down and get rid of Lashley. And then Conan gets on the microphone and says that Alberto El Patron is going to be part of LAX. So they, uh, the LAX members are celebrating with him, though Alberto El Patron is kind of just out of it and can't really stand or anything in that sense. So he's not saying or showing anything to go along with it. So it makes you wonder, it's like, okay, it, like they've announced him as part of LAX is he actually part of LAX and I think I feel like that's what we're gonna be getting here in the next few weeks or something in that sense it's like is Alberto El Patron actually part of LAX or is he um, or is he still on his own and they're just saying he is and trying to get him to be part of it and everything to go along with it so we'll see where everything goes with that um, overall no bad impact uh, by any stretch of the imagination, um, mainly because uh, matches, like I said, th their quality of matches are usually pretty decent uh, in for the most part. It's just like where are they going to go with the stories? I like the build up that they had for the new LAX member, which looks like Alberto El Patron, but we'll see if that actually is. Uh, the opening segment with El Patron and Bobby Lashley I thought was really good. Um, you're getting storyline setups with Trevor Lee going after the uh, going after Sanjay Dutt and the X Division title. This thing with Joseph Park and Grado seems to be doing something. You also have something here with Braxton Sutter potentially turning heel, like, and then you have the Super X Cup to go along with it. And how are they going to build around that? Um, you had some decent store. You had some decent starters to stories to go along with it after slam reversary and that's where they needed to go with everything uh in that sense of it at least to, to me that's wh where it is like okay you had a lot of things end at slam reversary now where do we go and instead of just like waiting a week or something like that to start building the stories it's like um okay we'll have these matches and they kind of just they're there the matches are there but let's build these stories 
doing these things outside of the matches to go along with it. And I thought it came off pretty good. And then you have this whole thing starting with the EC3 and Moose as well. So we'll see where that goes uh, along with everything too. So with that being said, everybody, that's pretty much everything I have on GFW's Impact Wrestling. Yeah, it's actually a thing now. It's actually a thing now. So with that being said, everybody, um, I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.